All right, welcome everybody to our special talk, 360 degree real talk, uh, real point about stock. Now, some people say why it's 360 degree, and, and it's partly because of Smart Roby, one of our mobile apps, which is to develop by our company FinTech, pretty much like Revenue Group, which is also a recent startup like Ace, which we're going to go through a little bit of the history. But because of the time frame that we have, I'm just going to cover more of the important things. You want to read about the history, you want to read about the founder, you can go to the website and read about. But these are a few things that many of you may not catch it and, and look at the reason why I should buy or shouldn't buy a revenue group. And part of this, we look at 360 degree, we look at the technicals, we look at the fundamentals, we also look at from a news driven standpoint. So that way you will always be uh, aware, you know, and not get tricked. I, I do know, you know, I've been hearing uh, some people send me uh, uh, certain emails and also in our exclusive uh, uh, Telegram uh, chat room for the Trade VSA, uh, the, many of our members already sort of, you know, taken profit for rubber glove, you know, which I've been telling them, right? But I will just talk about highlight and those of you who are catching me also in the uh, morning breakfast show, I've talked about it. But today it's strictly dedicated to revenue group. Now let's go on. Now, for those of you who are listening for the first time, I want to invite you to join our Telegram chat group in here. There is a QR code in there and be part of our 4,000 Telegram followers. And if you find our Telegram group, also invite your friends to join too. I think that's one of the uh, best benefits that we do. And many things that we do there are free, 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 free. That's why right. we are free. And when you are ready, you feel like you want to sign up for our Trade VSA package. No hurry, no hurry. That's right. Right. When you are ready, you, you, you want to join and want to learn more, you upgrade yourself it's a bit like like a game we always feel like free information you share and you benefit too all right so again uh, again more free information is to subscribe to our YouTube at trade VSA in there uh, when you ever go to trade VSA subscribe it and we, we try to make our talks very interesting very lively and the intention is especially those of you who keen number one huh? if you keen number one means your first time listening and that's what we wanted to uh, really teach you and really bring you know things which is complicated, very complex to something very simple that you and me, even your children can really understand. I think that's that's what we are trying to target in here. All right. Okay. And also, also don't forget those of you who just type one in here, do download a copy of Smart Roby, all right, uh, which is essentially what we do tonight, the analysis in here. And you're able to follow me also on the breakfast show, the morning breakfast show that we use to analyze the stocks inside there. That's the one you really have. And also do uh, share this with your friend and you get 200 free credit. Okay. Now I always tell people, don't bother paying. Right, you know, just just share it and get it. And those of you who want to, you can use it after hours. After trading hours is free, except for the premium alert, which quite important. But if you don't want to pay, then just watch the show uh, that I normally do at ten fifteen there, and uh, you can get some of the stock picks also in there. So share, share, share. That's very good. You share that apps, you share this video timeline, and that's all you can ever benefit from. All right. Okay. Also, uh, there is a time chain to our smart Roby and our breakfast show talk. Do take note, uh, tomorrow we won't be doing a show, we'll be doing on Friday. Now that's right, Friday. So it'll be on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10.15. So make sure you write down on your calendar. Uh. Don't suddenly come back 10.15, so used to watching me. Uh. Hey, today how come Martin sick? Uh? Uh, didn't appear, is, is he sick or what? I'll check FB, ta-da, ta-da, you know, then I contact Zach. <laughs> but basically, it's on Tuesday. So Tuesday and Thursday is an off day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10.15 on Live, F, uh, on Live FB, uh, Martin TFO. Also, also at the Smart Roby chart inside there. All right. Okay, good. Now, uh, this breakfast show, uh, like it or not, we look at some of the stock review that we talk about. And uh, 14th of July, I think Omisti uh, went up 11%. I think today went up. Uh, last check is up. I'm not too sure when the closing is. But don't don't forget, you know, despite you, you, what you saw in the market, the market came off down, but uh, it was good. Also, in, in our Telegram group, I did share, I got a, finally, I got another gold ball. I made more than 100% return. Uh, for that one was a micro link. And what really caught me micro link was the Uma. Uh, Uma Kuri came out. I bought around 80, 80 over cents. Uh, I kept it, and one of the reasons why was because of the Roby ratings. Now, Roby rating any more more than four, you know, uh, at the time when I bought it, and it has around 20 over percent uh, return on equity. But I just shared that already on my Telegram group uh, in my 
uh, in the, our member section there how to pick this and it was kind of good too you know it's been a while since I made a hundred percent return on micro link check out the micro link you can also use Roby to do that again uh, old misty it's 11 percent and you know if you go back uh, cold mark we, we did move up in here or oh, just watch that video that talks about all the setup and they will keep you get you up to speed all right now uh, this coming Saturday also very important I want to give you another update about the methodology that was uh, used by a Japanese billionaire trader his name is CIS and he was featured on Bloomberg I talked about this last week and he has singly handily moved the Nikkei you know really move it you know and he is actually a VSA trader that's why using uh, Wyckoff and price and volume in here it, it was actually picked up by Bloomberg and and he, finally why this story came out again is because he decided to write a book to to tell all you know how he he made the, the, the money that he made which is about uh, uh, 200 million US dollar or 23 billion uh, from uh, year 2000 and he, he started when he was only in universities right that's right now uh, you know it was published inside there if anybody who can read Japanese and you happen to be in Japan get this book I'm happy to to pay for it you know this, this is really insight and is really you know wonderful if you really just know this thing inside here so this talk will be on uh, on 2 to 4 p.m is this part of the story that i want to tell you how he does it and what methodology he used that's from 2 to 4 p.m this coming saturday again uh invite your friends bring your children your colleague pretty much like this but it's just a, perhaps slightly longer july 18 for that one all right so this was I'm just going to break it down just give you a little bit of snippet he did this trade back in 2015 you can see the Nikkei fall a lot more and uh, and what was the trade setup that he did I think that's quite important too it, once you know that one and when we have something like today what happened to me on micro link sure lah 100% return huh? <laughs> right if that's that's what we that, that's what we all we can ever do right of course many of the members will ask was it uh, NS yes NS is one of the patterns that we use no supply it always comes out and those of you who don't know NS do join our 9 30 tomorrow night which is headed by my senior trainer Zach will talk more about NS all right that's one of the things that you can see if you can CIS trader can do it so can you but tonight let's focus on revenue uh, group all right so let's look at the uh, 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 meanwhile yes yes meanwhile very important huh? meanwhile continue uh, foreign funds continue to sell less now this is from the MIDF research and what it barely says that look the foreigners are selling less and as i said before when the foreigner start really to buy that's the one you go through so right now in our trade vsa package you can get this huh we have the first mover third, third time foreign fund fourth time foreign fund and you notice that huh, the foreign funds are getting you know bigger bigger but what concerned me was uh yesterday right if you notice yesterday which is the 14 huh, uh you, you saw the net outflow okay net outflow now why i say this if you look at here previously uh, always been okay it's always been here average uh, okay okay wait wait i don't want this average selling is around uh 200 million okay so every selling is always 200 million net selling in here but then you went on to positive so this is good you swing up to positive but here is is a concern here this is the one it went up to at least minus 200 million so today i also think it's going to be foreign funds outflow it's because of the rubber glove those guys came in they started to accumulate they selling it but going forward very important that i will continue to monitor these foreign funds for you so just follow me every wednesday i will get you guys updated so you will know why is this important for this foreign fund out there all right so uh, that's the seventh time where we have it inside here. Now you all know, right? Uh, the blue color. Let me just draw this for you. That's why I want to know. Especially those are the first first timer one. Uh, if you're coming in, you're listening for the first time, just type one there. So at least I know I can sort of break it down for you. And so you can see the blue line is the KLCI, and the red line is the foreign funds coming in. My job right as a trade VSA market strategist is trying to make things that is very complicated to something you can understand. And once you can understand then money will talk to you through Robbie. That's right. That's right. And many of the things that we do here are absolutely free, right? And if you feel that you want to upgrade your skill, that's, you know, we always have something for you too. All right, let's move on to our next uh, 
uh, thing which is we were very proud of, which is in Spun Robby, is our trade VSA buy and sell indicator, which is also a uh, patent pending in here. Now, this is from last week, 8th of July. Now, the reason why I kept this because we are back where we are at 1583. It went up, we came back down. And if you notice the chart that we see in here, we got an up thrust. All right, let me just draw you here so you can see this is the support you broke through, you follow up thrust. So, there will be a likely chance this thing is going to come back down here. All right, and that's to me uh, will be a retest. It will come back. It's it's good that you have this little bit of what we call resistant uh, uh, hurdle. Right? You cannot break through pulling back, but we need to see volume. Volume is very important, just like CISA trader, right? How they see that volume. Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? So we also balance that with the foreign funds flows in here. So you can see 8th of July right now is the 15th of July. We're pretty much unchanged because the market is what? Is? congesting isn't it now also on the same topic yeah someone just text me right now i'm going to ask everybody uh, just before i should ask earlier on, how many of you already have revenue already bought revenue i i have i made it i have bought a, a long time revenue so i'm re and now if you have bought revenue please type it in there uh that at least i know you have revenue please be honest okay i have revenue i bought it I bought around 70 cents. That's right. Yep. When I first first discovered it, I'm going to show you a picture of me, the younger one, when I when I bought it. And and that's one of the ways I invest. I invest in a longer cycle. So how many of you uh, who have uh, revenue, just type, type in revenue. I really appreciate that one. That was good. All right. And uh, so the green pentagon was working. We got it right. And then the red cell, uh, the market came off. And then you got it right back again. Right. Uh, so the correct was right. Now, remember, pentagon guided despite being patent, despite having the technology, right? Uh, you uh, still write about 60 to 70% of the time. You cannot be right all the time. So we've been very lucky, right? Now. Great grapes. All of you are already with revenue. Good. Some of you who want a bit more oom, uh, you buy the Warren instead of revenue dash wa right that's the one who really have a kicker one okay right but for me i buy the mother share because i want to ride it a bit longer else why should i bought it 70 cents i'm still holding it right now in here okay great great okay many of you bought it too some of you not yet now those of you have not yet do listen to my reasoning and you decide so at the end of the day what do you think and for those of you who want to add on or don't want to add on something you want to consider about remember last week we talked about building the winning portfolio isn't it right uh, if you have not seen it yet please go and watch the furniture sector right ah yeah furniture sector move isn't it remember you know, all the homerids lee hand and uh the other one is what oh what that's right so let's see whether tomorrow we will see revenue jalan or not jalan now we always call it in there okay now also give you a bit of perspective from the us what's happening to our market to our rubber glove i think many of you are known which i've already been talking and keep reiterating you know i'm like a father telling the son hey you gotta watch out for this watch out for this isn't it right if you find i'm a bit a bit of uh repetitious you know but still give me a thumbs up okay <laughs> because i want you to make money in this round it's very important you make money in this round in here just doing something very simple understanding that the market is driven by supply and demand price and volume uh fundamentals and a little bit of news all right don't get news to trick you right okay so let's look at uh the if you see dow already hit thirty thousand. okay dow already hit thirty thousand. uh not hit la means going to hit by 2021 if the republican uh you know able to control the senate so that's where the november is if you notice all the cases in us right it does give this perspective why is the market not given any uh what we call attention to the number of cases but instead they given attention to what to this that's right this was the vaccine correct 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 right so you can see uh modena which is one of the big uh pharmaceutical who is doing the final stage that's right final stage which means they you can notice in there right you can read this all about it right but very important is the implication that they are trying out on thirty thousand participants a lot of people who really want to drink beer one want to go out and say hey, please, please please vaccine me i want to take vaccine because i want to go out and drink isn't it <laughs> there's a lot of crazy americans are out there okay so they they actually do this kind of uh, things and you want to get them vaccine so that's right the market last night last night 500 points tonight i think it's going to go up too that's why what i talk about in this period dow will hit 30,000. so the american market really focus in uh, to the positive news because the people die is going to die unfortunately i had to say it but 
the vaccine. There is also the Sinovac vaccine, which I talked about last week, uh, which is headed by the Chinese, and they're testing on the Brazilian too. And also, I think today there was a news, uh, uh, Duo Pharma and plus another, uh, I think YSP, so Jalan, uh, because government said, if the vaccine is coming to Malaysia, these government uh, contractors like Duo Pharma, I think Duo Pharma also moved. Uh, in that, in, so that will be the first line change, and it's going to be a contract. But the question is, how much revenue is going to be there, and how impact is this? So now, right now, we are looking at recovery, okay? Recovery of the post-COVID, which means rubber glove may not be in favorable. It will, but it has to come back down to a normal level first. So I think today you see something like a five percent sell. There will be more selling going in because also you can see uh, early on. I talk about the foreign funds. Uh, they also want to jumble with this, so they might want to sell some of those uh, so-called uh, uh, stocks, uh, which is the big four, okay? What are the big four rubber glove? Anybody know? Okay, big four rubber glove. It is Top Glove, Kosan, Hatta, and Supermax. All right, Supermax still, Supermax has been pushed up a lot by the analysts huh? uh, on the price. I haven't checked uh, Supermax, uh, what's the price in here? So if you look back, uh, again, a lot of people talk about why is the great, uh, the great disconnect. Now, those of you who want to know what it mean by the great disconnect, especially those of you who are not up to speed yet, uh, why stock market go higher, but so many people no job. You look at the newspaper uh, or the news behind me, unemployment all time high, 47, 45 million people. And then, uh, Malaysia, Malaysia is talking about seven, 700,000 over people, uh, no jobs, right? But yet, why is the market going up, right? Vaccine, I just told you that, okay? So this is why, a uh, very good question, uh, there was polls and this uh, CNBC um, gentleman was also an analyst, Andrew Ross Hawking, talk about it, the market is up because the investor is bet betting on a vaccine. All right, that's that's so simple. If you've been following me all this week, you would know what I talk about make a lot of sense out here. All right, so thanks a lot. Oh, Superman, that's right. Yeah, I was talking about Superman. Now, this is a QR code. I apologize on the, on the bottom, not able to see, but just go over and type, uh, you know, why stock market keep going up. Andrew Ross talking, and it's only explaining five minutes in here. So what I try to do, I use some of the free resources that you have on the internet to make it easier for you to understand. All right, so let's look at, aha, finally people say, ah, why talk, talk, talk so long, I never get down to it. Okay, finally we got to here, can buy or not. So revenue, can buy or not, all right? Um, then Martin, uh, earlier you say so many good things about this company. So where are we? going for okay now this is eddie ng ji Xiong. Let, let me introduce you here is the group ceo is the md and also the co-founder right now he started from a very humble beginning if you if you read it uh there are four mm, okay four mm, they're not related uh ng ji Xiong, ng ji kyong uh ng shin something and another ng, uh, i can't remember so first thing i when, when i met them i said hey you're, you're brothers they said no 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 do i look like brother one tall and one skinny and one sideway <laughs> right it's just that they're all good friends in the college that's right at the college they started from a very humble beginning they but one thing about a chinaman management style they are hungry right do i look hungry i'm also hungry isn't it <laughs> hungry to teach you guys how about the market is okay so um, all right. So this is the uh, uh, Eddie. It's always good to when you buy any company, especially those of you who are first time and you are not technical inclined. You don't look at the charts. You don't look at the fundamental. But then you want to see where you put in your money. I think the management is important in here. So here is a little bit of a comment just for the fun of it. COVID-19, please buy more things in Lazada and Shopee during our MCO. Because if you do that now, how many of you bought things from Lazada or Shopee during this MCO? Just type in there, Lazada or Shopee. If you buy a lot Lazada, times uh, multiplied five times. If you buy Shopee, buy a lot, you multiply five times. Just type it in there. I want to see whether you all bought a lot of stuff or some of you still wait. I don't know how to buy. Like, ask my son. Just type it in there if you can, right? So, because we want to know, because when you buy revenue, okay, when, sorry, when you buy from Lazada or when you buy from, you will come across a payment and go to revenue harvest. Okay, even in Shopee, also some of you will have revenue harvest. When you do that, you are, if you have a shareholder of revenue Bahad, then you're benefiting that. So if you have that, just type it in there and that's what it means. All right. Okay, good. Yeah, some of you bought from Lazada five times. Oh, you bought a lot. Huh? Good, good. Shopee. All right, good. Okay, now, uh, first thing first, I, I need to clarify the differentiation between e-wallet 
and online payment gateway because we are going to get a bit technical inside here okay the technicality is one of the top payment solution provided in malaysia right like ipa88 uh, ghl and also mol mol was bought up by razor pay which is you know, a startup from singapore they want to go into mol because they always do gaming and also senang pay which is the 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 one that we use ah uh, uh, trade bsa use senang pay remember those of you eventually you sign up for our master class sign up for our packages you use senang pay and that's the one we have it's it's one of the top eight in here revenue right according to to eddie they hasn't got into the online payments yet because they are big on the terminals you know when you go and buy uh something right you go to the shop you do credit card per terminal pay they were big okay they were big and what they do is during the post COVID-19, right? A lot of people buy through online. So every transaction that you go through, right? You will go through uh, buying, and especially the Taobao, okay? Taobao and, and Shopee, you will go through a little bit of the house. But why I want to bring this up is because to understand between the online payment solution and the e-wallet. Now, I'm just going to go on to the next slide here. Now, this is a picture of me, a bit slimmer. Do I look the same? <laughs> do I look the same? Now, if I look the same, uh, give me a thumbs up, right? So this was a picture of me and, and uh, Eddie. Uh, Eddie lost a bit of weight, Eddie, all right, uh, since then. So the, the business, they actually have three segments of the business, okay? Number one, this is the number one, the EDC, the electron. I'm going to go through each and one because then you understand the business. This is the one that have the terminals, okay? This is one, this is two, okay? And this is three. Okay, this is the like the uh, software business lah, huh? software integration. Okay, okay, this one is the tow concept, tow gate. Okay, ah, this one EDC is the terminals. You know. Okay, now I'm just gonna go through it. Now the terminal means you, you easy lah. You go, you go. I'm sure you all eat out, isn't it? You all eat up your makan, your right. Ah, that's the one. Right. Remember now, you either wave. And you will see the white uh, looks like a, a, a phone one uh, that has a printer, white color one. Uh, that's the one by uh, Revenue. So what you do, if you ever bought this top, every time you go to a restaurant, you check out, make sure the terminal is white color. If it's white color, then you'll know Revenue is in there. And they are growing this EDC business. Huh? I'm going to get down to the definite. So from then onwards, you see EDC, they have their so-called uh, 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 online payment solution, which is the Revenue pay here so the revenue pay is one platform then you can access a lot of the banks which are going to go so in here acquirer are like the credit card mastercard okay then you have the visa then you have the may bank all right all this so what they do right is that they integrate this whole e-payment platform they work with bank nagara they are certified by bank nagara so that's what they also say in one of the the, the report the biggest risk uh, is that they lose this licensing or, or the, the technology. So they are regularly audited by the bank Nagara to make sure they actually satisfy to a lot of it. Okay, so you can see the software business in here. That's the one that, you know, for example, if Touch and Go Card, which they, Touch and Go Card is one of their, their customers. Let's say Touch and Go Card wanted to integrate to their payment gateway, then they talk to them. Uh, Grab also is also with, with them. So some of the payments that you pay through Grabs, uh, also revenue will benefit too okay now this is where uh, the uh, payment card ecosystem I uh, need to talk a bit lah uh. so where you start now if you start you always start from here first number one okay so here you start here you apply for a credit card okay or you apply for a credit card or debit card okay uh, okay so here you start first after credit card maybe let's say Maybank or Hong Leong Bank or Maybank you approve you go here then they give you this card lah, apa apa, you get it lah, Ali pay whatever. So then you go outside, okay? You go out and you go shopping, okay? So number three, you go shopping here, okay? Shopping. If you got physical lah, or you get online, so online and physical revenue will catch you. Ah, that's why I like about it. Uh, because of COVID, no people go out ah, uh, correct? They still can pay online, but so they pay online. They also get you so so then you go online so this is where uh the uh, the acquiring bank in this case for for uh revenue uh, they have two banks okay which is hong leong bank and public bank they are the merchants huh? okay these are the merchants in here so this merchant will sell those uh retail uh, retail merchant are like uh what what could i i think the very popular uh uh, uh Restaurant, uh, I give you an example, uh, in where I stay, in Damansara, is the uh, Park Village. Let's say a uh, Park Village, 
okay it's a restaurant then you got some uh, Starbucks okay what else all those are uh, will have the retail and when you can do the payment so then they rent out those are uh, alright so what happens revenue will provide the terminals you know the terminals the white color one uh, the white terminals all right and these are all so the, that's how you use it so every time when they use tit 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 uh, they get a certain percentage now these are the e-wallet provider they will also work here you can see uh, boost alipay also we have the e-wallet sign up so whenever you sign up the e-wallet okay and when you make certain payment you will go through revenue group so this is the minimum you should understand when you invest in revenue so once you understand that right then it's good to go because why because going forward you will see the dynamics of when the transaction base increases all right their revenue will grow that's why they call revenue group <laughs> correct now okay let's move on so these are the edc so you can see edc are the terminals i'm going to go out so you can see here all right these are the etp this one is the toll gate lah. okay so they always charge certain percentage between one to two percent okay ah this is all the solution let's say touch and go card wanted to uh, uh get access to visa or this uh, they go through so these are the, like the solution services usually we have like because of integration right but this is where they work with the banks okay so let's say you decided want to pay uh through because your bank right your bank is uob bank or your bank ocbc bank you pay through that but then you use visa to pay i think this one quite easy right so these are the three business edc is the terminal right i believe last time when i spoke to him on the picture they're selling around 1000 to 1005 okay a ringgit per terminal and after selling uh, you still need to pay rental terminal uh rental also you can pay or you can do rental rental a bit more and also monthly maintenance now uh, that's that's very important uh, monthly maintenance or their monthly rental income they will rent out so this is where i talk about it. now very important why is this is because you you notice most people who are strapped for cash the last thing they will cut are usually their payment terminals isn't it because that's where they receive the money isn't it now these people don't even use cash which i'll talk about later on so they they will cut maybe they will cut the staff they will cut the the advertising right they will cut the delivery but the payment gateway very difficult because this is where they receive money so this is the point where they are most likely not to cut and that's why we felt that this is where they have that age any business because especially in my business too that's the last thing then edp is the toll now how we see this now if you have the concept let me just show you uh, this is a toll gate okay now e-wallet are basically like you and me we have an e-wallet okay i have a touch and go now how many of you are touch and go card our competitor we're going to get to that link link it's actually ghl i'm going to talk about that so e-wallet who is uh e-wallet now e-wallet we have touch and go right we got the grab these are the big one now uh, and the other one is a uh, busa okay so what happens is that now e-wallet is very secure one suppose we secure that that's where they take care of all the infrastructure because if you put in 50 ringgit okay 50 ringgit they have to make sure this 50 ringgit don't kena churi lah even if you transfer out or you pay your your food or whatever they have to manage all this. that's what the e-wallet does but when you want to pay to the merchant uh, you want to pay through the merchant you have to go through revenue ah you have to go through revenue so this is where revenue become the toll gate okay that's how simple is it so e-wallet can be said that you're renting a car okay like 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 grab i'm renting a car uh, when, when i want to go from a point a or to buy something i have to go through a toll gate so toll gate is where uh uh revenue comes in and they will charge a one or two percent just like the banks a very small percent and then the solution one is small because we're going to see the breakdown after this okay so is this okay now if you're okay give me a thumbs up because you understand yeah okay terminals now has gone down right to 700 all right so they're bringing up the the price down now depending what terminals no uh the last one are a bit high tech a bit not the the gineco one they have some terminals if uh, uh wong you say that uh this is the uh, next time when i do see eddie i'll probably ask him how much the terminals they are selling up but to me if you need but i think most cases uh most people because straps for cash they will rent you know just like if you if you, computers like a lot of company they don't buy because terminals what well, you rent better then you just pay higher maintenance fee which is good you know because normally when you pay rental right they just have to have cash but because interest rate are low they're going to charge you a bit more
right? Okay. So let's move on. Now these are the so-called uh, uh, ecosystem that they have. Now they also have their own proprietary. They're the first who came out with the QR code, which is touch and go. So God lah. So let's say you pay QR code. Uh, you 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 scan the QR code, right? Then you type in the amount. Think you all know know that, right? And then you can pay through Boost, Money Pay, Touch, V Cash. Uh, net and so forth. Now, net is the is a better way of paying, which is the Singapore one. So a lot of people who have the payment system called net, they can come into Malaysia and, and still pay. Diners Club, I don't think much. I've never used Union Pay or JCB. Now, how many of you use some of these discount? Those are more American based. Okay, the usual one are, are like Visa and Master. Okay. Oh, LG Tech. Okay, LG Tech is another one. I've not looked at LG Tech. I'm just looking at the GHL for the bigger one. All right. So why revenue right now now this is a news more recent uh, on may 28 and and this is the one that i felt that which need to you know speak out so be, uh, on the recent paypal okay uh the daily usage has surged to very very high level and what the ceo says uh right uh dan schulman on uh on the paypal during this pandemic now this news is may okay the e-commerce and digital payment uh, in the three months has gone way, way high where it will take Nomi three to five years to achieve. You know what I mean? Not? So this is what, just something like, like rubber glove, uh, which people don't talk about it yet because no one discovered it yet. Isn't it? So when I came across this news, I said that, hey, it's time to share with our member in here. And, and that's what a GH, GH system is going to be benefiting too. Uh, if RGT Tech, which was, uh, thank you, Kuma, you, you brought up the RG Tech, and if they have a same uh, payment online solution in here, they is going to improve. But uh, most important, they must tie to what? They tie to the Lazada, tie to Taobao, tie to Shopee, isn't it? Because people shop a lot there, right? Uh, these are the important ones. Uh, when you see the toll gate concept, right? They pass by, tick, uh, you pay the tick. Pay the, ah, that's good, isn't it? So imagine you are shareholder of revenue. Every time people use the white EDC terminal, right? You feel good. Or I have some Apple share. So whenever people buy, use Apple, I feel good also, right? <laughs> right. Yep. I pay 88 is one, but they're not listed. Okay, I pay, I'm going to go through that now. So this is the, 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 the chart that I want to talk about why there's a bit more upside going in. You notice of revenue and PayPal. I, I, I always think that, you know, revenue can be the PayPal of Malaysia. Okay. They are only focusing in Malaysia only because of their ground base. They want to work with the banks. They want to work with the, with, with the local provider and Taobao and focus on Malaysia. Whereas GHL has focused all over the place. They go to Philippines, they go to Singapore. And to me, sometimes, cannot do business well, you know, in Malaysia, they only need to go overseas, right? Uh, this is what I, I personally feel. Lah. But uh, revenue being a, a, a sort of, uh, they've been around for some time. It's just that they got listed on the ACE market. Uh, they are looking to transfer to the main board. They haven't reached the critical revenue yet. All right, so they are not there yet. Once they reach there, when they transfer over, then you know what? A lot of the big caps, uh, they can focus on it. Just like Inari. Remember when I first spotted Inari, uh, I bought it before they split. It's the same thing too. So, so I, I do see some representations of Inari and also revenue. One of my goals is actually to spot some of these little small, small cap, cap small capital who have growth, good story. Like I talk about the CEO, Dan Schultzman, right? And when you see that trend going in US, that trend is going to come to Malaysia. And when they come to Malaysia, it's no brainer is going to move. So you can see here PayPal, right? Uh, PayPal has already moved up 120%. Uh, where we are, right? And it's taken up an old, old, look at this. This is an old high, isn't it? You see this? This is an old high for PayPal and you broke through and it shot all the way up here. You can see that one. So this is revenue. This is revenue, old high. Okay. This is PayPal, old high. Now, why I know about this? Because I bought PayPal around $86. It's also double 100 percent Okay, now of course revenue not as strong or as powerful uh, as PayPal, but it has some potential going forward in here. Uh, definitely taking out to the old high 156 is easily done. So there's still a lot of upside from here. You, so you can see here, right? From so from the chart wise, PayPal boom, went, went sky high already, but revenue has not. So 
This will all depends on the next quarterly earnings. When's the next quarterly earnings? Ah, you check with Roby. All right. So this is one of the potential in here. So you, right now you can see a revenue group. The one of the biggest customer are Taobao, MRT Station, Duty Free, Mont Blanc. This one you can get it from the uh, from their website. Uh, okay, in here. Now let's look at our alternative. Okay, which is the GSL system and our GTEC. Thank you for notifying. Uh, the market cap for revenue group, I think is uh, just go over to uh, Smart Roby under stock fundamental. You can check it in there. Don't have to remember what. Just go use Smart Roby for that one. So you can look at the competitor and alternative, a uh, GHL system in here. GHL already moved because GHL more popular, no? Revenue hasn't. And I believe if I memory serve me, GHL uh, 1.4 billion market cap, whereas revenue is only 500 plus. All right. So you can see the upside. Uh, uh, GHL already move up 120%, isn't it? Right? Very similar to PayPal, isn't it? But revenue only moved 90%. What does it mean? Ah, uh, can you type in what does it mean or when you see this competitor? Who has more upside to move? GHL or revenue? Now stop it in there. Which has more upside to move? GHL or revenue to move? Okay? Because earlier many of you already have revenue, isn't it? Right? Which have more? Just let me know. Okay? Now also, let's look at the uh, revenue. Why I show you this one in here is because of this date. Very important date. Huh? 29th of August, which is about one and a half months from now. So right now, you don't want to wait until August when the result comes out. When the result comes out, the flow will run or it will drop a lot more. So this is the part where we anticipate. That's why price and volume is all about. Anticipating the price before it comes, right? We buy it. And we need to have the reasons which I share with you. If I see the same trend in PayPal, we might see it over here. Again, this is all on reading the trend. I may be wrong, okay? But I'm just sharing with you. I, 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 will, I will buy some more also, all right? Based on what I've seen in here. So in here, 135, uh, last check, uh, if you go back to, uh, this is only doing 125. They haven't break up in yet, or you want to buy at a pullback on 1225. Again, this is one of the strategies that we teach in our masterclass. Those of you who are ready, you can come for it. And then medium profit target is 146, which is on Smart Roby. But you can also look at the old high, right? Old high for revenue is 156, okay? And he does some uh, bonus already, bonus bit inside there. So what are the criteria that goes into selecting revenue per heart? Okay, now let's look at the fundamental stuff in here. Uh, is it WACA? Is it uh, uh, thing in here? So very simple. One of the things that we want to do is to look at the growth of the rev of the each segment. Now this is the EDC business. This is the terminal. Okay, the terminal business. This is the toll gate business. All right, toll gate, which is the one to two percent every transaction uh, this is the uh, sorry uh, this uh, this this toll gate is over here sorry uh, this is the terminal rental and this is the sale okay and then this is the software so if you notice uh, the sale and this is the total revenue uh, the sale is almost 21.4 divided by 57 oh goodness 57.9 which is how many percent? Let me use my calculator here. 21 divided by 57, which is almost 36% right, of the sales of terminal. Now going forward in terms of merchant, as people get more cashless, they're gonna be buying a lot of rental. So you notice this growth of the rental and rental is 13,195, okay? Million, okay, so you put 13.1 divided by 57 million. That is almost uh, 12%. This one is 12% here. So what we are saying here, buta buta, okay, rental, they're getting 12% one. If no need to do anything. Because why rental they need one? As I said before, most people are willing to sacrifice a lot of, of their businesses. Uh, they maybe they, they cut the staff, but rental or terminals they still need keep, need to keep. Right? Maybe last time they have four, but maybe they can cut down one more, have it three. But it's only I, uh, I last remember the rental is somewhere between uh, 12 to 16 ringgit, depending what what uh, is the, the time frame we're talking about, right? Okay. Now, uh, question: uh, Revenue PE is over 50. Yes, I would say it's over value because there's no crisis. When the crisis fall, remember uh, I talked about public bank rating was four was good. Right now, it's considered as a growth stock. It's over 50 times. It's not cheap. Below 35 to 45 times is okay. But again, sometimes I tell people, uh, you got to buy based on the trend. Based on the trend 
and it all depends on you. You can wait for the thing to come down and then buy. But I think it's a growth stock. You may not want to get, you cannot get it cheaper. All right. So more of the time you can treat it as a trading stock. Remember when we first listed, uh, it was already 17 times. Uh, when I bought it at the time, uh, even at $1 was 26 times. Now it's 50 times. That's right. So it depends. This coming quarter on the 26th of September, the, the revenue need to be good. Okay, I, I need to move on, else I cannot finish like a few more slides. So if you look at here, uh, sorry, the gearing uh, is very low. Now, the next thing I always look at is the uh, uh, cash on hand. Uh, the, remember, the, the revenue is uh, 57 million. They got six, almost 17 million in cash. So they got a lot of cash on hand and uh, they have debts about 6 million so they pay off, right? So key ratio, they can cover, no problem. These guys are all cash rich and they're also very kiam you know, When I look at their annual report, uh, uh, you know, usually when they do the annual uh, company, company dinner, uh, they say even better all do on Zoom, save money, <laughs> right? So they, they normally do a big portion, but this, they all do a very simple simple restaurant, look like a Chinese restaurant or whatever, and they have a simple stage and that's it. So they really look at their cost. That's one thing I really like about them too, all right? So, okay, uh, next thing is, uh, so cash on hand, they have plenty of money. So next thing you can see, the margins has dropped. So right, margin usually drops after that business get better, they go go to a volume. But what's more important, you can see the orange one, uh, uh, they have grown the uh, profit right up to about 9.9 .9 million. All right, 9.9 .9 million. So that gives him uh, a profit after tax margin of 15.7%, which is not bad, you know, in my opinion, that's pretty good. PayPal is about 30 over percent. PayPal is about 30% profit margin. So they can actually do better on that one, all right? So next thing, ah, salary, CEO, right? Because to me, I look at that. Now, if you look at the one of, you know this guy? Anybody know this guy? Please tell me you know this guy or not. I'm sure you don't know what is his salary, isn't it? <laughs> right? Anybody know this guy? Please type in, you know who is he, right? Now, so the question I have is that he's quitting this very cushy job to work as finance minister. Do they pay a lot like finance finance minister? What do you think? Do they pay a lot? No? Huh? That's why I sometimes also think that, wow, you quit your cushy job unless I believe it's national service. Ah. Right? National service. So here, he got paid almost 10 million. I think that was 2017 on Vulcan Post. And the government servant, I don't think you get paid 10 million, right, a year. Can I? Someone tell me, anybody from the from the ministry uh, or government one, all right? So I don't think so too, all right? So this is where I find why it's important to know how much you get paid and how much you're putting in, all right? So next person also very highly paid is uh, Genting, okay? And uh, his remuneration is 168 million. That's right, 168 million, okay? 168 million, no. You calculate that every every second is a few tens of thousands. You just divide by 12, lah, you know. Lah, and then and remember where is Gending today. All right. Now, there was also, remember, the Air Asia two top gun salary. Anybody remember from the last issue? Can you type it in? Anybody remember? Right? How much was the pay? Of course, some people say, yeah, they deserve to pay because they get billions, isn't it? But I'm just trying to see if you're going to invest in revenue, right? How much do you think, as a shareholder, they should be getting compared to, you know, what are the big numbers? It's good to get some sort of perspective. I will see that, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, this Air Asia was about 22 million each, the big guns. So, on the annual report, is about 48, uh, 48 million. That's right. So, it's about $2 million a piece. Okay, now let's turn on to this attention. How much is the salary? So if you look at the salary for remuneration, if I get it right, uh, only 2.7 million for the whole year, okay, and uh, shared by seven directors. Quite cheap, isn't it? Right, compared to one year, uh, 10 million, these seven people, you know. So you can see, uh, it's like, you know, in Chinese, uh, they have a, a bowl of rice, many people share. <laughs> and But they work hard. 
they work the same amount of uh, heart inside here. Okay. Yes, you all remember Linux, right? Yep. Uh, good, good, good. You all still remember 22 million, right? So you're all paying attention, isn't it? Great, great. I, I see you all like it too. So this is where we talk about the salary is important too, right? 2.7 million. I, I believe that like, it's shared by seven people. Lah. If one person get 2 million, a lot already, you know, for, for one year, right? I, I think they make their butt. I'm going to go on to the next slide will tell you the founder. Uh, how it now, if you look at the next thing, uh, very important is also the uh, the biggest risk. There are four major customers, okay, A, B, C, D, okay, and they contribute more than 10%. So all in all, it's about 38 million. But remember, uh, their profit is, uh, pro uh, their revenue is 57 million. So 37 divided by 50, uh, 57, so which means company A to D, give about 65% of the revenue, right? It could be Taobao, it could be uh, Public Bank as the merchants, the Togate concept, uh, because uh, uh, I do know uh, Public Bank and Hong Leong buys a lot of terminal, order a lot of terminal from revenue and give it to the merchants. Let's say you open up and you find that COVID, you need to buy more. So you, you will buy terminals and uh, what they do, they sell you the, the terminals, right? So what they do, they sell big amount, to the banks, the bank will take it and sell it to the individual merchant, right? So because if you have a merchant with Hong Leong Bank or a merchant with uh, a public bank, then you either buy it or you rent it, right? And th those are kind of revenue you're giving it too. So uh, another retailer commerce. So there's a lot of room for expansion in here. I last know the number of terminals uh, officially was about 44,000. It could be more this time. So we have to wait until the next report that comes out. 44,000 term. It's actually very easy to calculate. You look at the rental, right? I calculated, all right? Uh, somewhere around, I calculated based on $16 a month, uh, a rental uh, per terminal. $16 is okay, isn't it? Like a cup of coffee, isn't it? $16, what do you think? Okay. Uh, the reason why they didn't put any name because they worry, you know? So I have to do some deduction here. Lah. It's either Taobao, Public Bank, Hong Leong, plus one more only. All right, uh, you can check out in there, okay? Confidential, yeah, 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 you know, people want to jury all the stuff. All right, so this is the, the key thing is, uh, so I calculated based on 13, uh, about 13 or 11 million, uh, about 60,000 terminals. That's right, 60,000 terminals, they, they have sold or rent out uh, to rent out. Uh, I'm calculating renting out. Even if you sell, you still need to rent out 60,000 terminals. So if 60,000 terminals are rental, so every year they'll get 11 million. I like this kind of no-brainer business, rental business, because like it or not, you know, unlike, you know, Airbnb, even Airbnb, so we'll have to go through some of this payment. Do I say this makes sense or not? All right. Mm. Okay. Give me a thumbs up. All right. Okay. Let's move on. Now, uh, let's look at the four. Mm, okay. Very important. They have to be the major controller because you don't want people to come in and kachow. I remember uh, Moa Buan Li went and kachow the uh, federal uh, federal holdings, right? Federal holdings, they do furniture for Starbucks, isn't it? Then they, this guy, the, the boiler want to come in and buy 5% and you want to do some corporate fighting. Uh, right? So this one, you can see the four mm directors, uh, which is classmate, they control 51% of, of, of it. So you can see, you know, uh, when they have 51%, the share price, even if they drop, they know that they are growing, right? It's not going to fluctuate so much in there. So any dips that you see when you look at the controlling shareholder, it's a good time to buy. And that's why I like this kind of company. Even higher, better, but not too high. Lah. Because too high, then there's no liquidity. They support everything. All right, that's some one company like that is like Bonia. They have a lot on their thing in there. Okay, so do take note. This this is something very positive. So if you look at the two way fight for attention. Now we brought up GHL. I know another member just brought up also RGT Tech, which I'm not looking at. So if you look for this two, when you use Smart Roby to do compare. So whenever you want to buy any shares, right? You use Smart Roby. Let's say you want to buy a Top Glove. Now remember earlier when we were talking about uh, Top Glove, I told I uh, the three or oh, last month. If you don't, go over to YouTube and watch the one I said. I said, right? Top Glove and Hatta are very expensive. The cheaper one was Supermax. I remember I said this, right? But I said, even though Supermax is cheap, but if you want to buy, buy. And that time, Supermax was maybe around $7 before it shot all the way up. So this is the same thing too. PE 54 times for revenue, PE 63 times for GHR. Take note of the return on equity, 5.3% and 10%. You decide. Which one is it? In terms of uh, uh, market cap, I think I answered uh, you all right. Uh, less than 500 million and 1.5. So which tells you revenue has a lot of room to grow. 
okay it's not under value okay uh, under value is metrics concept which i talk about it today uh, if you not just go and check out my uh, morning show but property very boring lah not this one this one a bit more exciting isn't it all right so uh two cashless solutions you can look at a chart okay let's look at the demographics i know i spend almost now where the online shopper now we look at it in terms of malaysia we are still considered a very young country okay the demographics of malaysia we are around 30 years old then but the e-commerce mobile market is 4 billion okay 4 billion they charge if they can get let's say uh, 30 percent or 40 percent of it and you calculate uh, one percent that's going to be good now this is right now you can see the projection for online shoppers of I mean, 2020 they are growing right uh 1.8 2.2 okay let's do our max here what is the percentage there okay if you don't do let me do it for you okay uh you just listen to me kennedy 1.88 that is a 17% growth, which is very good, right? Better than organic. Now, remember, the rubber gloves are growing 30% because there is a world pandemic. These fellas are growing half of that rate. There's no pandemic. But as people don't want to shop so much going out, they will shop online. And that's why this online uh, uh, revenue will grow. They won't get all of it. They'll get some of it. Right? That's why I find it very, very attractive in there. All right. Now, I, I couldn't get one from Malaysia, but I got one from Singapore. So you can see here the number of cash payment over years from Singapore. And I believe the same trend will happen. It's going to get less and less and less. There are going to be a lot of non-cash, which means cashless, and they're going to use uh, uh, revenue for that one. Okay. Next one is also from Malaysia. We talk about spending, consumer spending and continue to go up. And many of you will spend on uh, travel, clothes and apparel. So which means comes the post-COVID, you will do a lot of spending inside in here. All right. And projection uh, revenue also, you notice that uh, furniture uh, and electronics and also fashion will be one of the big spender in that. And it's going to grow right to uh, 3.5 million in there again all these are projection but bear in mind what's more important is this this slide here okay which is i do see the u.s covid spending during covid 19. what has gone up groceries isn't it <laughs> we all spend up this is from march to may but we can sort of do this projection way back to malaysia you can see take out the green one okay take out has gone up so during the post covid i believe you can see the apparel right all the fine dining has stopped cruise has just gone down the drain so you will see grocery take out all right and apparel and some other electronics will will pick up and that's why the news by paypal the ceo talk about where the last three month growth during the same time has grown three to five times usually it will take five three to five years to grow you can do it so you can see right now the breakdown grocery apparel in there are growing this is just a, a general consensus and paypal is more of a proxy to revenue Okay, now if you look in that in terms of that, the top shopping apps are in South Asia, Lazada and Shopee, that's why they're getting the major, major uh, share of the, the of the stocks. And very important, when we oh, apologize for the for the uh, re relationship stock price to earning. So you can see here uh, the earnings they did drop only one quarter, continue to go up. But this round was the biggest drop, and you can see this bit here also dropped much more. So. The next one will be 26th of August. How do I know that? You go over to Smart Roby, okay, and you look for the trading plan. Okay, and yet, uh, I think 26th or 29th August, okay, 2020. So if this thing goes up, what do you think? Do you think it will go up, right? Just type EPS up or not. Just type it in there so I do know up there, all right? And if you look at GHL, also same thing too, right? GHL have a big drop, but the price, the big drop that was here. You see this big drop and big drop, and then but it was constantly going. But the funny thing was GHL has a, a, a mispricing here. Despite the earning going, right? It just drops very, very steeply in here. Now, this is the stock price per quarter earning. It's absolutely free. You can go to trading view and you keep inside there. But if you don't do it, I will do it for you. I'll show it to you too. All right, you can see. So GHL in here definitely falls into that. So you look from here, the revenue group has a better, uh, what we call mapping between the earnings to the price. And I do think this coming one, again, uh, going back to PayPal, that story where the growth that will grow usually 
in the last three months has gone up three to five times. And I think it's very similar so or the online. Remember, I talked about online trading, the number of accounts that is open. Usually, uh, it will take maybe one year or 18 months to open the same amount during MCO. That's right. But this one is three to five years in three months. That's right. So will we see that in revenue? What do you think? Let me know. Okay. Okay, GHL. So now, so far, which one do you like? You have two guys. One is Danny Leong, a very young guy, okay? And another one is Eddie Ng. Now, there are two different profiles. Of course, there's also RG Tech, I have to mention, all right? So GHL focus a lot on ASEAN. I'm just going to summarize for you in here. Right? They focus, they got Philippines, which means they're juggling a lot of balls, huh? They're juggling a lot of balls. Right now, for Eddie, just Malaysia, a little bit of Singapore, maybe going to Myanmar, right? As a cash solution inside there. But I think very important, we look at how the company is run. Okay, they start from the humble beginning and when they first started, they were selling photocopier and services until today. You know, really different, no? you know, been logging the... But the other guy, Danny Leong, right, started in the technology consultant. So he started with the big four, he worked his way and then gained corporate experience and he's a CEO now. So to me, if I'm going to bet, which horse would I bet? Now type it in there while I get a sip of water. If I think I'm doing a right job in here, what do you think? Okay. Who would you bet? Okay, because we're talking about e e payment. Okay, which one? GHL or revenue? Oh, Wong was wondering why do Andy uh Andy Ng dispose four million shares? So sometimes they have a lot of shares. They need cash. They have to dispose of it, but they need to maintain that margin of fifty one percent inside there. Okay, Insider is selling a lot. Possible too. I agree with you. Okay. Okay. Buy both. Ah, can you buy both? But more upside. So what do you think? There are a little bit more upside I see on revenue. And I always want to bet on, of course, uh, if you like the regional exposure, GHL is good. They are more rounded. They are more corporate. But the Chinaman fellas are the revenue. Okay. So going back to this, right? And you, let's look at the case study uh, revenue for sentimental, very positive in there. So Smart Robbie able to do all the, the uh, reading of the news for you, make it easier for you all there, all right? And then also uh, looking at the fundamentals, which I've shown you before, this is important so you know whether you're buying overvalue or undervalue, all right? Okay, to me, my summary is that uh, Eddie Ng and his team, okay, with the revenue group, uh, could be the faster horse. We don't know. Seriously, I don't know. Just like with the Supermax early on, I do not know it's going to go up. Where it's going to go up, it's going to go come down. What do you think? Let me know what you think. But I do know there's a window opportunity now until the next quarterly earnings, which is end of August, around the 26th and 29th. And the action is accumulated on weakness buy on VSA pullback, if there is a pullback, or stage one using the Smart Roby trading plan. Okay? So, sort of sum up for you in here. To me, it's more like the faster horse. Lah. Ah, uh, revenue has a notice IPO proceed. What is that? I, I actually I don't know. Okay. So those of you who want to buy can buy a bit lower lah. Ah, all right. You want a bit more um by the Warren WA lah. Okay. Uh, but I sort of present you the overall picture that they are in what we call a rising industry. You know, the online is coming. They are looking to grow as part of their uh, acquisition of using the money they get from the shareholder in 2018 for the ACE uh, listing. So they need to grow. So they have the money, they need to grow. So these fellas are hungry, all right? Will they go outside of Malaysia? I will say yes, eventually, maybe next year, all right? And um, do it now. This would be a, such a longer term. Again, I am taking the key point because of the post-COVID-19 rally there. Today is up 4%, maybe because of people knowing this, but let's see tomorrow or next week, we will look at this again. All right, so Smart Roby, if you have not used it yet, it's really good product in, in there. You can really ask what's next inside there. You can even tell you the EPS quarterly by just doing trading view. Right now, the market now, it's, you know, we are moving from hope to relief. You know, uh, we are in the new bull market which I've been talking uh, again, and I don't want to repeat like like a, a record, but follow some of my talks early on. And I think I did a pretty good job, right, tonight? <laughs> and of course, to move further, those of you who want to do it, it's very important to know yourself and uh, you follow the right 
skills, right? Get coach, get a winning system. I believe ours, Trade VSA, with fundamental technical and news, is one of the best systems around. Where we look 360 degree view, right? You very seldom get it long unless your emotion get away. And also we have uh, tomorrow, one of my coaches, uh, make sure tomorrow night, 9.30, catch uh, my coach again. We're going to go into the technicals, more from a topic about moving average. So make sure you catch me tonight. Uh, my, my coach, uh, I, will, I will also pop in uh, three classical moving average methods used by a top hedge fund fan manager and strictly a very common topic, moving average. Make sure you catch it, all right? And also we have our three-day masterclass. And I, I hear some of you are already thinking, want to know more what we do, you know, using technicals and what are things we can support you. Definitely, uh, it's a free receipt all year round plus many benefits. You pay once, you get to sit all year round. Okay, find out more. There's a number in there, 10 and you can find out more. All right. And also, uh, our screeners are very good. We do trainings a lot. I think Zach just did one last week, uh, teaching you all about NS and make sure, and also Smart Robbie too. Don't forget that. That. All right. Post MCO, many many salary cut, but. We can help you to get back in your feet. We have the U.S. market, which we are looking at uh, this coming August. U.S. market, as I said before, PayPal is easy to study. Lots of information. In Malaysia, not so much. And that's where you want to be able to diversify out. You know, three-day masterclass, including the U.S. trading strategy. Make sure you catch it then, all right? And uh, join our Trade VSA group, if you have not. So that's all. Uh, why there's no FA rating? Now, when there is no FA rating, mean it's zero, all right? Okay, Lee, because we don't want to put zero, like very embarrassing. So, Roby put an A, not available. Okay, if you have not joined our talent group, do join in there and I'll end the talk for tonight. So, uh, I was supposed to finish at 45 minutes. I finished one hour later, but I just want to you know break it down for you so you understand that. So, uh, I'll see you guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, I will just stay back for one minute. If you have any questions, I'm just going to look through it. If not, I'll bid you good night. And if not, just post it in our uh, messenger or on our Facebook and I'll see you uh, tomorrow. No, see you on Friday. That's right. For the breakfast show, Money Talk with Smart Robbie. Thank you for watching.